Hi, welcome to the June weather trend forecast. This month is often referred to as a flaming June by many people, but the statistics tell a different story. It tends to be quite unsettled or changeable, a strong Atlantic influence bringing an ongoing risk of showers or longer spells of rain. Will that be the case this year? I'm going to start by showing an animation generated using data from the Canadian Global Model. It runs from 18 GMT, Saturday the 4th. At the outset, there are some interesting developments because heavy thundery downpours in France are moving northwards into southern and perhaps central Britain through Saturday night and Sunday. Those could well bring a localised flooding in places. Some very high rain totals are possible. During uh, Monday, they tend to clear away eastwards, and then it's a mixed picture, a ridge of high pressure, perhaps bringing dry conditions for a time. By Wednesday, though, further disturbances are moving in from the Atlantic, keeping the changeable theme going. And that remains the story in the following days, areas of low pressure air moving to the northwest of the UK, quite a strong Atlantic flow, tightly packed isobars for a time, meaning it could be quite windy. But by the end of this particular animation, Tuesday the 14th of June, high pressure is starting to have more influ influence, turning more settled. This, of course, is just one deterministic model run, and 10 days ahead, the accuracy is falling off very, very sharply indeed, which is why it's important to look at the ensemble data uh, to, to get an idea of the probabilities of different scenarios. Here's the GEFS plot for London. Air mass temperatures across the top, going out to 16 days, are often close to the 30-year norm, which is shown by the thick black line, a little bit above for much of the time, but all in all, there isn't really a big anomaly showing at all. Rainfall across the bottom, there's some huge spikes early on, those thundery downpours, it then turns drier, particularly between the 9th and the 13th of June. Beyond that, the number of rain spikes starts to tick up once again. Not settled for any length of time. Some drier days are very likely, but also showers or longer spells of rain remain a threat. Going up to the uh, ECM chart for, for London, I just wanted to show the ECM ensemble to see whether it varied with the GFS a great deal or not. Very similar really, air mass temperatures close to the 30 year norm for much of a period, although towards the end there from about 15th of June onwards, there are more very warm runs in the mix, just indicating an increasing chance of some very warm days developing around and after the middle part of June. But not all the runs are supporting that idea, and it looks like even ones which are bringing in warm conditions are not keeping them in place for long. They're quickly dropping away again. Maybe thundery plumes moving up from continental Europe, then being shoved away quickly as the Atlantic pushes back in. The GEFS now for Glasgow, so going up to the northwest of the UK. Air mass temperatures very close to a 30 year norm throughout and the clustering is tight. It's unusual to see the, the, most of the runs so, so closely packed together, even going out a long way forwards. It suggests a relatively high degree of confidence in this scenario happening. Rain spikes to begin with, it's drier here between the, really the 5th, the 6th, the 7th of June, just the first couple of days. Then it turns wetter, significantly so. There are some big spikes here again, but the thing is the consistency of them going forwards, it suggests quite a changeable or unsettled pattern, that risk of showers or longer spells of rain continuing throughout. The ECM, air mass temperature plot for Glasgow, very consistent as well, close to the 30 year norm, just one or two runs at the very end, bringing in much warmer air, at least for a short time. Taking that ensemble data together, changeable, very close to the norm. We do have sea surface temperatures of 
above the average around most of the UK. Therefore, it suggests that down at the ground level, two meter temperatures may well be pushed upwards a little bit despite, uh, despite 850 HPA temperatures, which we've got here, being quite close to the norm. Rainfall. On the left here is the ECM chart, on the right the GFS, both for days 0 to 10. Deterministic model snapshots rather than ensemble data. Big differences there showing up. ECM much wetter in most of the UK. GFS on the right showing rain for all areas, but not huge amounts in parts of the uh, south, the southeast, and even there in eastern Scotland, it's quite a dry story. Just really these two plots are highlighting a big difference between the, uh, between the two deterministic model runs, uncertainty about rainfall amounts, therefore. Well, the first half of the month may be summed up as changeable or quite unsettled. What about the second half? Really, it's just about trying to determine at this range whether temperatures are going to be above the norm or below them, rainfall amounts likewise wetter or drier than average. The uh, pressure anomaly chart for uh, the week beginning Friday the 17th of June here from the GEFS points towards a negative anomaly, only a weak one though. Pressure slightly lower than the 30-year average, not hugely so, and that's covering the entire country. Going forwards a week, it's a similar story. The negative anomaly has actually weakened even further, and out to West Fair across Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, it's becoming just slightly positive. Very, very close to the average, though, and that story is the same across the whole of Europe. No big anomalies present here at all. The air mass temperature anomaly chart for the week beginning the 17th of June, reds and pinks indicate positive, blues negative. Over the United Kingdom, there's generally a weak positive anomaly again, although in the West, naught Celsius means it's very it's almost bang on the average for 30 year norm. Going forwards a week, not a great deal of change. Slightly positive, slightly above the average. Looking at those charts together, it's a very, very typical picture. Of course, each one of them represents the, the average data for a given week. Therefore, there could be significantly warmer and significantly cooler days within it. Likewise, with the pressure anomaly charts, high pressure and low pressure may be alternating, but taken as a whole, a very typical pattern can be expected. Taking a look at the two meter temperature charts, London, the reds show the mean maximum and mean minimums from the ensemble, generally above a thick black line, which is the 30 year average. So temperatures at the ground level for ones which we experience could probably be summarized as being uh, a little bit above where they normally would be through the second half of June. And as I say, that's really supported because of the um, above average sea surface temperatures around the UK, which means there's more warming taking place at lower levels. So even though the air mass temperatures aloft are just a little bit above the norm or close to it, there's still that tendency for it to be a bit warmer down at the ground level. Up to Glasgow, similar story, slightly above the uh, thick black line there in general terms. The anomaly though a little bit smaller than in the south of Britain. So to summarise the month, the first half of the month is probably best described as being changeable wettest in the northwest with dry periods becoming more frequent in the south and the southeast after those downpours clear away early on. Temperatures over the period as a whole close to or slightly above the average. The second half of the month, showers or long spells of rain remain possible in all regions. Temperatures generally above 
above the average, and in the south in particular, there could be some very warm and thundery days mixed in. It's not looking settled overall though. So, there we have it. Flaming June, yes or no? Probably not, at least according to the data available at the moment. But as ever, things can and do change quickly in the UK. So if you're hoping for a long period of hot and settled weather, don't give up hope at this point. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.